Hey, uh, let's get to it. This is a show where, of course, we're going to have the, the regular topics of conversation. Plus, we've asked our panelists to make predictions for this year as well. And the categories could be anything from state to local to just funny or humorous. And we'll ask you to do that, uh, to lead off your segment and then get into your segment, unless your predictions are your segment, which you had the option to do as well. And we go a little something like this. Hit it. All right, intro time here, and uh, the intros are going to be kind of like a group intros. Instead of individually, indiv- you know, one at a time, we're going to give you individual at a, as a group here. So here we go. All right. Uh, so long as I can do it without coughing. As we ring in the new year, we ring in the old crew. Two Republicans, two Democrats, and one independent in the stew. We've got political opinions from all occasions, political leanings from all sorts of old Caucasians. <laughs> We've got an attorney named Schultz who likes to thrust and parry. If you're looking for a liberal to trust, might I suggest our Larry? He'll loyally defend Joe Biden come hell or high water. He'd even defend Joe if he snuck up from behind his own daughter. (laughs) 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 What broke that on, right? (laughs) So he knew he was no threat. (laughs) Rob, don't ever move to West Virginia. (laughs) You've been tainted enough. He's, he's the long. <laughs> Why don't we stop there, Rob? <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to bother down this path. <laughs> there comes the coffee. All right. He's the longest tenured member with the most seniority. Mike Carl's our resident Biden basher with the most authority. He doesn't care what Biden does. It's simply not good enough. Even if old Joe invented the Oreo double stuff. After this show today, for 60 days, we lose Pamela Height's spouse. If you visit Mike in Charleston, just knock on his door and ask, Excuse me, sir, is this the Delta House? <laughs> Hornby, Coles, Willis, and Chiarelli are the renters who came. When you sign your lease, height makes you say, I state your name. Like so many these days, Joe is working remote, cross-examining guests because Freddy's the goat. Like John Gilstrap said, I wouldn't want that guy questioning me. If I found myself in that position, I too would take a plea. With a discerning eye, he questions an elected guest. Bill holds them accountable and demands their best. He returns to the panel in his 83rd year because he's Bill Stubblefield, Admiral Rhea. <laughs> well, it's a whole new year with the exact same panel, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> it's normally said Rear Admiral, not Admiral Rear. I couldn't get a rhyme out of that one. <laughs> the rhyme takes precedence, though. The rhyme takes precedence there, too. Uh, now, uh, we will start uh, once again with Mr. Freddie by telephone, as is our tradition. All right. And, Rob, I believe we're supposed to lead off with our predictions, and I'm going to do that. Uh, my predictions for the coming year, number one, Joe Manchin will not be a third-party candidate for president. Number two, there will be enormous pressure on President Biden to run with someone other than Kamala Harris. And number three... As evidence of the work-from-home craze, a graffiti artist will be caught defacing his own home. (laughs) I like that one the best. (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) Now, my topic. Uh, Rob, we uh, a couple weeks ago talked about the issue with affordability of housing in the eastern panhandle in Martinsburg, Berkeley County. And we know the problems there. One of the issues that arise with the cost of housing is homelessness. And we know that's a problem in Berkeley County. The West Virginia Coalition to End Homelessness periodically does a head count in our area. And statistics show that we have uh, anywhere from 100 to maybe 300 or more people who are encamped, who are living out in the woods, out behind fast food establishments, or anywhere they can find shelter. Uh, and it's believed that that head count is an undercount. So we know the problems that arise with these folks who live in these camps. Uh, oftentimes police are called because of uh, uh, assaults, battery, drug use, drug selling, uh, any number of issues, health issues also being very prominent in these encampments. So I was struck by the fact that the city of Wheeling passed an ordinance 
now where they are going to issue citations to these homeless folks and, and consider it a violation of the law for them to be encamped out in the woods or elsewhere throughout the area of Wheeling. And I'm wondering if that's a possible solution here because we know that a lot of these folks resist going to the many options that are available locally, uh, such as the Rescue Mission, Bethany House, and, and other places and other social service agencies that, that help these folks out. We know that there's resistance to them doing that. So is, is Wheeling approaching this the right way? That's my question. All right, let me begin with Mr. Stubblefield here for issue number one and the question from Joseph. Joey Toots for ready. Yeah, Joe, uh, as, as normal, you're raising a real issue that needs a lot of discussion or a lot of de- uh, debate about it. Uh, I think there's a fundamental difference with, uh, with Whelan and what we have in Berkeley County, Martinsburg. Uh, Whelan, the homeless population, was very, very, very visible. Uh, and they, were, they took action not to find an alternative solution, but to curb the visibility on the streets of Whelan. Uh, in Martinsburg, uh, we also have a homeless population, but I would suggest they're less visible. That doesn't mean that some Something should not be done. It needs to be uh, something done, and I think the rescue mission, and other, other, and the various churches are trying to address this issue. Uh, but the the ordinance that was enacted with Whelan had a different purpose and a different result. Uh, intend intending of what we see in Martinsburg. So, yeah, I I think we should should address the uh, the homeless problem. We need to do more about it. Uh, but I don't think finding someone that has no money to pay in the first place is the way to make it happen. Mr. Carl. Well, I, I don't – I agree with most of what Bill just said, but <clears throat> I wouldn't, didn't think it was limited to fines. I thought it would be incarcerated. I mean, you know, multiple charges. I, I, you may be right, Mike. I don't think so. As well, I followed that, I thought it was strictly a fine. I did not think there was jail time associated with it. So, well, uh, but I could be wrong. I, 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 and I, yeah. I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. e- either. But Joe, do you know? Yeah, it could lead to uh, a jail time if the fines run up and they're they're not paid, uh, as yeah. it would with, with many other folks. And that would, you know, be a, have an effect. I think. Uh, but, but at the same time, uh, uh, I, I think uh, what the way we're approaching it here, not criminalizing it, uh, they criminalize themselves under existing law when they steal things and, and you know, trespass and everything. So, so I, I, I think it's just a, almost symbolic what Wheeling has done. Lawrence. I can't imagine <clears throat> that there's any more uh, expensive – monthly dwelling than the local jail (laughs) and so here we have a housing crisis because people don't have enough money to get a house and what we're going to do is have the government step in and pay nine times what it costs to rent an apartment uh to put people there that really doesn't make any sense to me if it had a deterrent effect and they could really prove it maybe i could reconsider but I'm guessing it's not having any deterrent effect. If you say to a person who cannot afford a dwelling to live in that I'm going to charge you money if you don't spend money you don't have to get a house that's not available, they're going to say, well, okay, get in line with everybody else I owe money to. I, I, you know. And then eventually, if you're going to enforce the fines, you got to put them in jail. Once you do that, now you're just throwing good money after bad. Strikes me the same as charging extra money for bouncing a check. If you had enough money to cover the check, you wouldn't have bounced it in the first place. <laughs> Michael Hyde. Yeah, this uh, this just uh, it's one of those things with politics. It seems that happens way too often. Is is people say we have to do something about this issue, and then the what they determine to do about the issue makes no sense at all. But we have to do something. So. You know, they, they go and, and, and write this ordinance that we're going to start now charging people who don't have money money um, to do what they're doing. And the whole reason they're doing what they're doing is because they don't have money. So none of it makes sense. Um, it wouldn't work here in, in Berkeley County. 
Um, I, I can see if, if Bill, if you're correct, if it's because they were so visible on the streets, we have we have that visibility here in Martinsburg. Probably not as much as not in sure. Wheeling, but they they're still visible here in Martinsburg in, in certain areas. And the reason they won't go to these places that that offer assistance is because most of them, the reason they're homeless is because they have drug habits. And and in most of these places that offer help, you have to be clean and sober, and that's part of a, a requisite to get into these places and to get assistance um, and some of them just have no intention or no desire to get clean and sober they're that hooked so uh, I I don't agree with the the approach that Wheeling's taken um, I, I think that they're going to find out in a few years that it's not working um, and they'll have to come up with a, a, another avenue Joe back to you well, a couple of interesting, uh, first of all, all very valid points. Uh, I can't argue with any of them that were made this morning. Uh, uh, one interesting aspect of this that uh, I think we need to explore uh, locally, we do have an ordinance in the city of Martinsburg that the city police can come in and if they suspect, just suspect, drug use or drug selling in a, uh, a landlord-tenant situation, if, if the occupants, the tenants, are, are engaged in that kind of activity, the police can come in and evict those people. Uh, despite whatever the landlord wants done, the, the police have that power pursuant to ordinance in the city of Martinsburg. And if you talk to the folks at the West Virginia Coalition for, to End Homelessness, they'll tell you that that has increased the number of people who are homeless in our area because of these actions of the city police. Now, I'm not being critical of the police because we know we've got a, a major drug problem and something has to be done there. But uh, the, the result of some of those uh, interdictions by the police has increased the number of people living in these camps. And so it's compounded the problem. I think we also need to look at this. We know that a bunch of money has either arrived or is about to arrive from the state and from the actions of people like Matt Harvey for opioid addiction. We know that these people in these camps have a lot of problems with opioids, and I think it's no stretch to apply some of that money that is going to be coming to our community to help with this homelessness issue. One thing Wheeling did in passing their law was make sure that there are efforts being made to establish managed camps all right. Again, more shelters where these people can go and perhaps not be fearful that they're going to be arrested for drug use, that they're actually going to have the ability to get into some rehabilitation programs and all, again, with money that's coming in from the opioid settlements. So I'm hopeful that locally our folks will make use of some of that money and will try to eradicate this issue with homelessness and these homeless camps by getting these people into even other additional facilities where they can live under a roof and perhaps get some help. Joe, I'm surprised that uh, somebody hasn't pushed back against that city ordinance. I would, I would think um, <laughs> that that would be unconstitutional, that you're, you're taking action against somebody without um, their due process. So why hasn't somebody pushed back against that? Well, I, I, it, there was some pushback. I, I believe some of these uh, these folks who are engaged with the homelessness did cite the fact that the numbers were increasing because of the Martinsburg City Police actions. And again, I'm not being critical of that, but there has to be, uh, if there's a cause and effect established there, there has to be some response from the local community to deal with the effects of the police going in and, and trying to rid some of these drug users and drug sellers out of these uh, tendencies that exist. You know, it was the whole drug house situation that existed in Martinsburg. And I believe it was in 2016 or 17 that the ordinance passed allowing the police to have these powers. So, yeah, I'm just wondering why uh, wasn't one of the these these constitutional groups, the ACLU or somebody like that, that would have pushed back and brought legal um, action against the ordinance itself? Because it it seems like it's it's clear that it violates a constitutional right. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, that, ha to my knowledge, that has not happened. But uh, it, it could have been ripe for that kind of uh, that kind of attack because. 
again, it did not require an adjudication or any kind of legal proceeding finding that someone was or being convicted of, of dealing drugs. It was really, I think, a probable cause standard for the police. Bill, when you were Berkeley County Commission president, was homelessness an issue you had to deal with in any way? Not at the county level. There were several groups, uh, most notably the uh, uh, the United Way under uh, Jan Callen, that was acutely conscious we had a homeless problem, and he was trying to find solutions mm-hmm. uh, to address it, and obviously the rescue mission and some others. But as far as a formal issue, I don't think the county commission slash county council ever addressed it as such. Charlotte Norris, uh, who I think most of us in this room know, uh, commented, how about financially supporting the social services who have solutions, housing for paroled and those coming out of recovery program? Delegate Michael Height. Uh, this is an is- issue for the legislature and for county politicians as well, but I would say probably primarily through the legislature since it's the central funding source for much of government in the state. Before Mike answer, going back to my question, we the county council, and I guess they still do, do fund certain programs, but they do not actually address it as something they have total responsibility for, mm-hmm. but they do fund. Excuse me, Mike. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how you would do that on a state level. There are so many different organizations that you could fund and, and would do good work. I, I'm that would be difficult because you could have a different organization in every county um, that doing that kind of work. Mm-hmm. How would you? How would the state fund that? And and where would the money go? Who Grant, would grants it? to counties to direct it. Be, I would presume, possibly, right? Because they would have a better local knowledge of who was doing what kind of work. Yeah, it, you know, and not all homelessness is created equal, right? The uh, magistrate Daryl Shaw provided us with a study just before Christmas about eviction rates in Berkeley County, much of which was tied to the increased cost of housing in this county. So you've got working poor who mm-hmm. can't afford the rent that's being charged or the mortgage that's associated with the house that costs a lot more in Berkeley County than it does in most other counties in West Virginia. So the eviction rates, for instance, in Berkeley County are much higher than the eviction rates in Kanawha County, which is the only bigger county in, in West Virginia than, than Berkeley County. And he provided with us with that information i guess about uh two weeks ago it was i think it was on december 21st uh if if you're uh if you're working poor uh this is something that locality pay might address for instance Uh, if you have substance abuse issues locality pay isn't your biggest problem right now right that's the situation where you've got to want to get uh, treatment and get into recovery and as we know, that usually doesn't stick the first time. That is a multi-efforted approach when you're dealing with a person who's a, uh, suffering from addiction. Mike, you look like you were leaning into your... your well, locality like, pay is for local government employees. What's that got to teachers, do with Teachers, teachers, what's that custodians. I mean, I don't think the homeless problem, you know, uh, is involved with... Local government employees. Uh, yes, there, there really? are there are working poor. There are people who you probably don't know uh, are living in their cars and going to work every day for because lo- they can't afford their home. Local government. Do they work for local? I mean, government? I, I'm all for locality pay, but they, not they, not not to eliminate homelessness. <laughs> no, no, but it's <laughs> it's there are working poor who do live in their cars. Yeah, yeah. And they you know, they, uh, they could be your local school teacher. Uh, they they, right, they could be... Right. I, I never put those two together. They could be the custodian. They could be the cafeteria worker at the school. Well, that's because, all... Uh, let me put it this way. That's all more reason to have locality pay. Which was, which was my point. Yeah, yeah. yeah something I, I, I that could be addressed. connect them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Rob, you, you made a very good point a second ago. We tend to think of homeless, we tend to do paint everything with the same brush, mm-hmm. uh, which is a mistake. And homeless, we think that they they have a drug problem and that is true with a lot of them mm-hmm. but there are other reasons as well yes and uh a, a medical issue i've known folks that literally became homeless because they cannot pay the medical bills or a, a desertion by the husband from the from the family there's a whole multitude of things that can can create homelessness mm-hmm. and we do not give that enough credit we tend to see someone homeless and we automatically jump to the assumption well they have a drug problem therefore they don't really they it's of their own making so we shouldn't be too concerned about them sure well, a lot of people have pride and and they yeah. don't want you to know yeah. that they're homeless yeah. and well and they're making the best they can out of a situation there are different kinds of uh, levels of homelessness mm-hmm. you might say for example a young couple 
can't make their rent, so they move back in with grandma or, or dad and mom, and they're living in the basement with their children. That's obviously not as bad as someone living out in the middle of some farmer's field uh, with, a, with nothing but a tent, but it is still a form of homelessness. Until we can address the people who are living with grandma and granddad, we're going to have a really hard time addressing the people who are living behind the Wendy's or whatever, mm -hmm. or whatever the, I don't mean to pick on one fast food place, but behind a fast food place because they can walk over there and get something to eat. Um, it's a multi-level problem. And there are a lot of people who are not technically homeless today who a couple of, um, a couple of bad months, and they will be. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of people who are getting ready to break over and we've got to be careful. If a recession were to hit and a bunch of people were to get laid off in Berkeley County, you'd see this problem just skyrocket. And then you'd say, why didn't we do something when it was manageable? Um, and so, yeah, I, I think there's time to, to get it moving. Joe, final thought comes back to you. Well, I, I'm <clears throat> ill-informed about any constraints on this opioid settlement money and how it's spent locally. But I have to believe that there would be an easy tie-in between uh, that money and helping with this homelessness situation in Berkeley County and in the city of Martinsburg. So I hope our leaders are listening who are going to be stewards of that money and, and they'll put it to good use. According to a Harris poll, as many as 65% of Americans say they frequently live paycheck to paycheck. That's two-thirds of those who responded to that Harris poll. Question supplied by Barron's, uh, by the way. 9 o'clock, this is Talk Radio WRR Martinsburg. So welcome back. Our panelists via telephone, Joseph Joey Torts Ferretti, who always gets us started at 830. Joe, good morning again. Good morning. Michael Height, delegate. He is leaving for Charleston sometime after this show to begin the 60-day session. Delegate. Good morning. Good to be here. Senior member of the crew dating back pre-9-11, Michael Carl. Good to be here. He's recovering from just being a bit under the weather, Mr. Lawrence Schultz. Glad to be here. Glad, Glad you to, recovered. Glad to <laughs> stop coughing for a few days, at least. That's uh, all right. Height has yeah. picked up the pace from you. <laughs> I have, yeah. <laughs> and to uh, lead off the second hour of the program... Admiral Rear, Stubblefield Bill. <laughs> Admiral Rear. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, my my predictions are, uh, if I can find them. Uh, Bill, we, we just had a 10-minute break. I know, I know. <laughs> you prepared and ready I found to them, go. I found them, I found them, yeah. <laughs> my first prediction, it's really not a prediction, it's a given. Mike Carl will continue to say Biden is the worst president of all time. <laughs> I don't know, that's debatable. Mike's coming around. He's coming around slowly. Uh, a second prediction is a third party will emerge with a very formal candidate this Ooh. year. And third prediction is that Krauss and Jackson will be removed from the Jefferson County Commission. We'll see. Bold. Okay. Very bold. My, my issues are that Derek Evans, for the ones that you may may not remember the name, was a congressman uh, elected to the House of Delegates in West Virginia, uh, was part of the insurrection, actually entered the, uh, the, uh, the Capitol, and subsequently had to resign from from the House of Delegates, had never actually uh, uh, set was not sworn in, but he was had been elected. Yes, and, and it's important to point out, Bill, that he videoed himself and stated on the air that he was in the Capitol. Yeah. And he provided his own evidence for his well, trial. And, and he's doing it again. Uh, over Christmas, he posted a picture of a Christmas tree with various ornaments de depicting uh, Pelosi, Obama, Hillary, Biden, so forth, so forth, and Fauci with, uh, with figurines with a noose around the neck each individual with a noose. My question is, is this act of disrespect protected by the First Amendment? And before the answer, there was a, there was a 1992 Supreme Court decision that said outlawing the displace of certain symbols, such as burning the cross, is protected under the First Amendment, unless the, the, uh, the action act is viewed as an express threat of violence so my question to my esteemed colleagues was the christmas ornaments is it protected by the first amendment yeah, not to mention the racial overtones of a noose around president obama's exactly yep. yeah let's start with the attorneys on the panel here first mr carl well the the first amendment is as we know 
very broadly applied. And the, and but the the exception that that Bill mentioned is uh, you know is somewhat subjective to say to say the least. But I I, I do think that there would be a, a basis to contend that the Christmas tree ornament situation was was an active threat that that was not protected by the First Amendment and and could be uh, subject to some some kind of prosecution or at least uh, uh, prohibition by by uh, you know court action. Would the fact that he was one of those in the Capitol on January the sixth affect whether or not this was an active threat to Mike? Well, the, the, uh, it would certainly add to the you know the the factual case that there's a pattern here that he will actually act on threats and he has in the past. So so I, I, that's a good point. I I think that would be part of the proof that uh, uh, there there ought to be some prohibition and. Uh, penalties for what he's done and larry next uh, yeah. attorney at law mr schultz same same situation same background sure it's a um i don't know that it's protected i'm not sure that something as worthy as the first amendment ought to be sullied by considering it um, as as a party as a part of that it's so insanely stupid especially from a guy who found himself booted out of the only elective office he ever won to come back and do this same sort of thing. Um, I would prefer, rather than sully the First Amendment by even considering it, that the voters uh, pass their judgment and uh, we can be done with this guy forever. Um, You know, it's... Uh, you know, I think the First Amendment is a very important part of our of our um, of our basis as a country. Um, uh, but I would hope it would never come to determining that that instead the remedy of I never voting for this guy will take care of it. <laughs> Mr. Ferretti, the third of our three attorneys on the panel. Yeah, the, the, the difficulty with a First Amendment analysis is that oftentimes you have to have hindsight in order to determine whether or not the, the activity that is in question uh, is an incitement to violence. Uh, and, and that's unfortunate, but that, that's, uh, that's the way it works with, with uh, that kind of analysis because it's, it's, it's very subjective to look at an expression, which I'm sure Mr. Evans would claim his Christmas ornaments are, to look at an expression like that and say, oh, boy, that can incite violence. Uh, it's hard to say <laughs> whether it would or not. And so hindsight is the only way sometimes to define that kind of uh, conduct. But I, I, I do believe, and I think this is a, a, um, uh, a situation that we have to look at in broad strokes. Uh, these candidates who seem to ratchet up the symbolism and the imaging that they want to use in their ads or that they want to publicize, like Mr. Evans did by, by posting pictures of these Christmas ornaments, they, they want to use that as part of their political campaign. They want to superimpose targets over certain political opponents. They want to fire guns at you know certain aspects of, a, of another political persuasion. Uh, and, and, and by the way, you know, Joe, I remember Joe Manchin taking a deer rifle and shooting a hole through the uh, uh, some kind of legislation he didn't like. I mean, I hope that we as a society will start taking a critical look at that kind of behavior because it will happen someday. And I'm sure we can go back and look at past instances of even some of these mass shootings where people are motivated by what they read and see. We have to have a call upon these politicians to understand that there's a line they cannot cross and they cannot incite or they cannot uh, try to at least provide an image that there's going to be a violent response to what really is a political question uh, in many of these campaigns. Uh, We've survived public policy differences in this country going back 230 years. What we have not survived is internal strife to the point where we take up arms against each other. And so I think that the politicians have to 
have a clear line that they cannot cross. And I, I, you know, we have to look at the FCC and, and we have to look at the, uh, uh, the, the people who control some of these campaigns and, and really impose on them a bright line rule that you can't have that kind of political campaign uh, and those kinds of images as your backdrop because I, I, it, it's just going to further motivate those in society who would see violence as the only solution. Mr. Height. So I, I look at the First Amendment as very, very broad. And I, my personal belief is this is probably protected by the, the First Amendment. Um, that because they're Christmas ornaments on a Christmas tree, I would deem these as probably his Christmas wish, not necessarily that he's going to take action on these individuals in this manner. Um, I also don't see the the racial side of it, um, as you alluded to, with, with the noose, because they had nooses around all their necks. It was just, it was more, it wasn't racial, it was more a, a, a Democrat, Republican, or, or left-right uh, type thing for him. Um, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, stupidity is not always criminal in this country. And um, people have the right to be just as stupid as they want to be. Um, and, and it's not necessarily a, a criminal uh, a thing. And this guy is as stupid as they come. Um, and thank goodness he's not in the legislature. Uh, I hope he doesn't run. Um, and he, he should not be in politics at all. So I think he just shows his, his true colors by doing some of this, um, and he should be ostracized by the people, uh, not held in esteem. Well, he is running for Congress. He's challenging I, Carol Miller. I was going to say that. He's running for 1st Congressional District. He right is. Now. I'm just yeah. saying I hope yeah. he's not. I hope people send a clear message that you, you're not for us. You don't represent us. You don't re- represent West Virginia values. Bill comes back to you. Yeah, as despicable as I think that the image portrays, I agree with the, the panelists that I don't believe it approaches the, the for, uh, violation of the First Amendment. I, so I do not think he did. But I do think it's an interesting thought or an intriguing thought just how far we have to go before the First Amendment is, in fact, violated. So. On to issue number three, and for that, Delegate Michael Height. All right, so my uh, my predictions, um, my first prediction is Joe Biden will fall down again um, <laughs> in 2024. Larry's not laughing. Um, <laughs> Donald Trump will sue somebody again in 2024, and neither one of them will be the nominee for their party. Oh. Uh, maybe that's a Christmas wish. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, is that a prediction or a wish? <laughs> It is protected by the First Amendment, though. <laughs> his, his, his wish or his prediction? <laughs> Whatever it is, yeah. So my, my issue is West Virginia has seen about a decade now of extraordinary economic growth due to business-friendly legislation and marketing that uh, West Virginia has done to business worldwide, trying to bring them into West Virginia. So my question to the panel is, can this be attributed to the vision of Craig Blair and Roger Hanshaw, or is it due to other factors and other people? You didn't mention Jim Justice in there. No. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> All right. So we get uh, responses now. I gave him a chance. Jim, if you're listening, or I'm not Jim sure staff, he, I'm not sure he, he heard you. You know, Daryl's one of his roommates, too. Yeah. Hey, I don't have anything against Jim Justice, and I think he has has gone along. And, you know, a lot of times legislation is leading on these issues, and then the governor says, yep, these are good ideas, and signs off on them. Um, so I would, I, I'll say this. I believe the governor's team, mm-hmm. the, his underlings, um, like, like the Economic Development Group, um, have done a great job trying to bring these these companies in as well so governor's team he's put together a good team uh, for economic development doesn't the governor get credit for that sure he, he picked the team all right jim i was trying for you all right larry schultz you go first um yeah Ed, that's an um uh, an interesting question um there certainly has been growth and there certainly has been new economic efforts 
And at least part of that has got to be attributable to the gentleman whose names you mentioned. Um, the question is, will we see, because we have not yet, um, in the statistics and in the ratings, uh, an actual growth of West Virginia's reputation as a place where you can do business, 